one team one podcast back i'm still laughing at charlie's joke uh one team one podcast back episode 136 136 i'm still keeping count jack three six um yes At some point uh, we stop stop the count stop the count <laughs> stop the count stop the count okay. yeah we have to do that probably. okay no more no more counts uh, that'll be the last uh this will be the last count um, maybe we'll get to, we'll stop at 200 how about that no, I agree. Let's just stop it. It's getting a little old because I can't remember. Uh, it's, not, it's not just not. We don't need to. You know? No, I agree. Um, so, all right, we had we we're going to talk about a lot of stuff. Uh, we had a really rough week last week. There was a game that happened. We're really not going to discuss it. It was against the team. Um, no, it doesn't really just, matter. The regular season ended last week. That's all. The regular season ended now. Done. Now we have the opportunity to play in the postseason mm-hmm. that not a lot of people have the opportunity to do, including the team that we played against last week. So we're going to talk about that. SEC West champs uh, going into this game. Um, yep. uh, heavy, uh, underscored heavy underdogs um, this week. But we own we own that town we own the city of atlanta so uh we're going in there and we're going to handle our business um piss and in cornflakes yeah we're going to piss in their cornflakes uh we'll we'll talk a lot about that um we're going to talk a little bit about uh i know charlie you want to talk a little bit about possible transfer portal stuff yep. in the, maybe in the future we can talk about that um let's see what else we we had a couple of questions on twitter we'll go over and then um you know, we'll go over our score predictions for the SEC championship game and possible bowl opportunities. I think yeah. is something else that we can talk about coming off of yesterday's playoff um, rankings. But uh, before we do any of that, a uh, big shout out to our sponsors. First of all, uh, Bank of England Mortgage. Uh, we appreciate Patrick Michelson of Bank of England Mortgage, a proud sponsor of One Team One Podcast. Check them out at boesouthernstates.com. Uh, they have their fast app feature online. Um, you can apply for a mortgage or a refi straight online. They'll contact you. They'll find the right product for you. Contact them, 225-810-1805. Love Patrick and what they do. Also, Fred's in Tigerland. Fred's still rocking, um, even though the last home, home game was – um two weeks ago they're still rocking um staple and baton rouge drink specials every night a big concert venue obviously um and the best screwdrivers in the world uh the baton rouge's oldest college bar established in 1982 go check out mark nay and the guys over at fred's uh they do the fucking also, uh, River City's Total Maintenance. Uh, Lucas Raguso, we're at River City's Total Maintenance. Uh, NOLA-AC.com. This is in the North Shore in New Orleans area, guys. It's about to get colder again. Uh, it keeps getting hot and cold, hot and cold. This is the perfect time for you to get your AC and heater maintenance. So go check out River City's Total Maintenance, 504-841-3300. And Lucas is my guy, so go check him out. All right, so let's get to it. Um, Yes, yeah, so game game that will we will not talk about happened. Um, what game? Yeah, well, and and you know we were five, we're number five in the country. Possible playoff uh, implications coming into this game, and now obviously there aren't. And um, I think there was a lot of talk yesterday because we dropped to fourteen in the rankings. There was a lot of talk on Twitter. I know of like, was this too far of a drop? All right, what what do y'all think about I mean, that? 14's too far, but um, it doesn't matter also. Correct. Uh, it's just yeah. a number. And, and I think what you were saying, Jack, was like 14 was too far because of a couple of the other teams that were ahead of us, right? Right. Kansas State at 10 makes no sense at all. Um, yeah. And I think a lot of people accuse the committee of uh, maybe a little ESPN bias, and I think it's actually fucking true. Uh, ESPN has the Big 12 game. Um so now that's a top 10 matchup between them and TCU. Sure. Kansas State has zero ranked wins. It doesn't make any sense for them to be in the top uh, 10 or yeah. above LSU. I don't care where it is. Um, so that doesn't make any sense. And that's just, I really do think that that's just because they, they're going to be on ESPN this weekend and LSU is on CBS. So yeah. um, I'm with you there. I mean, do they have, they have two losses, right? They don't have three yet. Three. I mean, no, they're they playing. Three. They have if, three. 
They have three. It's the same okay, record well, as us with zero wins. We're zero okay. ranks. It doesn't well, make and, any and they play TCU coming up. You know, I just think that Texas A and M loss was such a terrible loss. Sure, and sure. Maybe that's maybe that's what they're taking into consideration. But I agree with you. I think there are there are are two TCU, who is obviously three. Uh, Tulane, who's um, you know American cha- regular season champs, probably going to win the American this weekend. We'll talk about it. Um, and then Texas, uh, who and Texas is what like seven and five, six and six, yeah. something like that not good. So it's a similar kind of thing to losing to Texas A and M. It doesn't make any, and and then they don't have a win over Bama. They don't have a win over Bama. Yeah. Jumped into the rankings this weekend, so that's just another ranked win that we have. Right. Um, right. Right. I don't know. I can't. That's that's almost inexcusable that they're ahead of us. We also have a win over eight and four Mississippi State. Number twenty, number twenty four. Yeah, he said that. He said he, so. Oh, they jumped in the rankings, but you yeah, had Ole, you have Ole Miss. Ole, Ole Miss, Miss fell out. out. It can't. Yeah, out. right. Um, Ole Miss fell out. And Mississippi State came in. And then um, I saw someone was saying, "Well, they ha- you have to give them credit for uh, the, Oklahoma State." Oklahoma. Uh, for winning the Oklahoma State game because Oklahoma State was top ten, I was like, "Well, then you have to give us credit for the Ole Miss win." Exactly. Yeah. Um, you can't have it both ways. I think neither should get credit for either of them because it turns out neither of those teams were any good. And Oklahoma, right. and especially Oklahoma State didn't have the yeah. quarterback that game. But right, right. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna complain about rankings. This, that's I, I saw a um, and we're gonna we're, we'll kind of talk about this later anyway. But I saw a, a poll that said, um, "Who would you rather play in a bowl game?" Uh, coming up this year, would you rather play Kansas State, Tulane? Um, I'm trying to think of a couple other uh, Notre Dame, and there was another team, but it was all, it, they all had like ties in some way of like what would be more like a interesting bowl game for mm-hmm. you. Like Kansas State would obviously the tie was like last year's Kansas State game. Tulane is Tulane, and I think that would be. I mean, could you imagine playing Tulane? That would been that'd be awesome. Man, I almost don't want the Tulane thing to happen. <laughs> just why, I, just, why not? I love Tulane so much. And oh, just, yeah, right. I don't know. I just like I don't want it. I just don't want it. You know, I mean, obviously, I'd have to cheer for LSU. Um, yeah. That'd be a house divided over there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just like, uh, and then if Tulane wins, then I like, I'm pissed, but I'm happy for Tulane. <laughs> yeah. Around, I'm like, I don't want to squish the bug, you know? Right, right. Tulane Billy would be um, in the streets running naked, probably. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, um, okay. I so just, let. I feel like with the bowl game question, though, I think I'm more interested in where we're playing than who we're playing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree I with that. I want to play in the Cotton Bowl. I'm, I'm like, I mean, obviously Sugar Bowl would be great because that means you know we're the top team in the SEC. We, we'd probably have to win the SEC championship to go to the Sugar Bowl. We will. Um, what what if actually, it was LSU wait, Texas wait, Cotton Bowl? LSU Texas. Yeah. Well, Texas isn't even up there, are they? I thought they were. Twenty twenty three, I think. Oh, I don't know where they are in standings of like the B, the Big Twelve and how they rank in that the Cotton Bowl, but it would be I think Cotton Bowl is going to be whoever wins the American Championship. It's going to be either Tulane or US, UCF. Oh, so we would play we would play the American. Yeah, it would go to the Cotton Bowl. Yeah. Okay, so it would be LSU Tulane possibly in the yeah or UCF. Cotton Bowl. Yeah, you know Augusta what if actually. and hear me out. We play UCF in the Cotton Bowl like we did in Burroughs' first year. Mm-hmm. And they just nailed Jaden like they nailed Joe Burrow, and we just yeah, flashback. And then yeah. 20, 2023 is Charlie. the best team ever. Is that what you're saying, Charlie? That life is full <laughs> of parody <laughs> moments. Take it easy. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ, get this guy a drink. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so all right, we're moving on to Georgia. Obviously, uh, we're going to move on from that last game, and we're going to play the best team in the country. Um, and we're going to go to their state Yeah. and, um, okay, okay go ahead. You have, we're you're on playing, your soapbox about Georgia. We're playing in the sec championship game against the number one team in the country and the energy in Baton Rouge fucking sucks. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <Yeah. Guys, laughs> like, this is like, this is awesome. Like, what are we talking about? Yeah. Like, I agree. Hey, Brian Kelly had his like introductory meeting with the team and shit. Mm-hmm. And now we're in the fucking SEC championship. Like, I, I, what's not clicking? Like, this right. is awesome. I know last week was disappointing. Blah, blah, blah. We're down to 14. Who gives a fuck? We're a huge underdog. Why aren't we just having fun? I don't understand. I agree. 
Like, I, and stop, stop thinking about, okay, well, if, I mean, if we could somehow get a win out of this and then get to the bowl game, no, no, no. Like, just go out there, balls if to the wall, we nothing lose, to lose. We lose by 20 and we go to the Citrus Bowl. Who cares? Have fun. The last two years, we were sub 500. Yes. What's not clicking? We, I agree. It's so fun to be here right now. Yeah, I agree. And I think it was just the lead up of like getting to the top five and then feeling like you got let down a little bit. Whereas we should been we should have been like thankful that we were even oh, like yeah. in the top fifteen to begin with. Well, after well, I mean like look looking forward to next year and just like totally forgetting about this year's team. And it's like we are in the SEC championship. Like yes. this is this is not a mail in. I don't think we're gonna win. I think there's a decent chance we get blown out, but like it's still make fun. It fun. Like, yeah, <laughs> make it is, fun. Right. <laughs> like I don't I just don't get it. And like I, I get looking ahead to next year in an optimistic way and saying, like, wow, look at what we did this year. Like yeah. we're gonna be even better next year. I get that side of it. But there's some people that are looking ahead to next year, like, this year is done. Like, we're gonna finish nine and five. Like, chill out. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just yeah. take it easy. Well, half of my Twitter, half of my Twitter was, oh, "Oh fuck, we're going nine and five this year after last week," and the it's other possible. half was, "Hey, if I told you we'd be nine and three at the end of the season, you would have came in your goddamn pants." Like, come on, yeah, exactly. If I told you we were nine and four, even, but our season's not done because we're going to get to play a fourteenth game, right? right. I it's agree. That, so I, I, I think my my record was, I don't know what our my official record was on the show. I don't remember, but it was either I, I had nine and three or eight and four, and okay. those were my two my two. But everybody did. Did I have us even sniffing the SEC championship game? No. Well, I thought all I thought all of our losses would have been in conference. Um, so should, losing Florida State wasn't even a possibility for me. We should all still be celebrating the Alabama win. Yes. <laughs> like still right now. Yeah, it was. Probably one of the biggest program building Moments. games yeah. that we've had in probably the last since Donardo beating Auburn that game, you know, bring back the magic kind of thing. Like it was like one of those kind of like Florida 97. It was like one of those kind of games where it was like a complete turning point of the of the program. Yeah. Like we should. I yeah, I agree with you. I agree. I did, too. Like, I think we should still. I agree with that completely. Um so now there's Georgia. Um, I'm excited, you know. Like I am too, actually. I it's I've just, seen just, enough Georgia games this year to know that like I'm not like completely around, scared. You can fuck around and be in the game with them. You know what I mean? Yes, and exactly. they're gonna come out with some intensity the same way they did against Tennessee. Yeah. Um, and they beat the shit out of Tennessee, and Tennessee's a great team. So yeah. um I don't think Tennessee had the defense to slow them down at all though. Right. So that's just the key is just slowing them down early. Um, and obviously there's like, yeah, that Tennessee game was like, that was the more like, that was the biggest, like Georgia is the big bad bully, uh, game. And they just stuck their thumb on top of them and didn't let them up. Um, but I, I hadn't seen that again in, in any other games other than, all right. All right so the Kentucky game, we, they didn't play, they didn't play well against Kentucky. They won 16 to six. Kentucky could not do anything, nah. anything on offense, mm -hmm. nothing. So like, yeah, they, they won 16 to six, but it felt like it was it probably did. 30 to nothing. It did. You know? yeah, exactly. exactly. And I think they do that a lot. They choke people out and it's just like kind of hard to, hard to watch, you know? Well, that's that's kind of how I felt like our game against Arkansas. It was like there was like maybe one point where I was like, oh, man, Arkansas could come back and win this. Um, right. But I mean, for the most part, we just we went there with a plan and it was just to get out of there with a win in an ugly way. And that's yes. what we, and, and that's what George has done several times. Pretty since. much. Yeah. I mean, the only time uh, actually that Missouri game was they were that was a tough that's, one for them. I should better bring that up. I that was the only time where I was like, oh George is about to lose. Because they yes. were down. I think they were they done down and they they were they, at the yeah. end they were they were getting close to, like they could have came back and they they could have scored again and yeah. taken the, to win the game. But uh yeah. yeah that was the one game that was like okay Georgia didn't show up at all. Um no. I think the next week they played Kent State and the same and thing happened where they yeah. they looked terrible there. Yeah. I think State was the week before that. Oh, okay. No, so no, no, no. 
It oh, was. I thought it was opposite too. Yeah, I thought it was after yeah, Missouri, was but Missouri then Kent State. Yes, and they were still like, kind of like in this Arkansas big fall. Still a lullaby. Right. Um, so yeah, but I've seen I've seen Georgia just like even the Georgia Tech game last week. Georgia Tech gets up. It's kind of tight in the first Missouri. I'm sorry, I just had to win that argument. But um, they were before Missouri. The week before Missouri. But, okay. Um, so I win, but you won. Yeah, you got it's, wrong. Um, okay. That's weird. That, you know. That's Congratulations. Exactly right. The feeling's um, the same though. You know, those to, to both of those games, right? It's bad Kent State win, and then you almost lose against Missouri. Are you still asleep right. from the Kent State? Yeah. Right. Yeah, and it was at that, at that point. It was like, okay, when Georgia wants to play, they will, they yes. will completely Absolutely. suffocate you. But yeah. when they don't want to play, then. Yeah, you know, mistakes kind of can, happen, can happen. Now, I, that was my thought was like, okay, George is now going to go to Atlanta and the SEC championship game, like, uh, you know, and really want to like just stick it to LSU. And that, yeah. but who knows, man? I don't know what team's going to show up. To be honest, can I can I say something? Can I say this? You can say something to the say fucking it. SEC. Why is the SEC championship game in Georgia? I, I get there's stuff that goes on, but Georgia I- has. Georgia opens their season every year in the whatever uh, season opener in the Georgia Dome. SEC Championship, or not in the Georgia Dome, Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Sure. SEC Championship, Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Their neutral site games are like maybe an hour away. Like well, nine I'm times fine. out of ten. I'm fine, with it being, I'm fine with it being there, you know, sometimes. But in a I, rotation. I don't understand why there's no rotation. I yeah, make, there could easily be a rotation. Um, there's who, 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 so obviously the Superdome you would add in that mix, but what other what other stadiums? And I would assume you would want a dome. I would throw Nashville in there. Yeah. Uh, again, except for weather, weather could be your issue. But there's plenty of championships that play outside. So yeah. like, I just don't, I don't get that. Like that's that's not a good enough excuse to me. Like, what about Miami? Oh right, Miami. That would be a good one. Uh, but it's not. It's not quite. I mean, well, yeah. no, I'm Miami belongs to. Yeah, I'm. I'm for. I'm for Miami. Like, I'm not going to say no to that. What about but, Starkville? Uh, what about? Uh, it's a neutral yeah. site. They're never going. It's never going to be a home game. How about Houston? Houston. Houston? Yeah, yeah. Uh, especially Texas after know you joining. Yeah, especially when you get the other teams coming in. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think that would be a good one too. Yeah. So. You know, to me, a dome's not a necessity. So Nashville, Tampa are both options in my head. Jacksonville, mm-hmm. uh, there's just there's so many. It yeah, could be a fun rotation. You know, I agree with that I agree with that. I just feel like Georgia fans have been so like it's such spoiled boring. with the fact that they have seven open kickoff percent. game is in Georgia nine times out of ten. They right. have seventy right. to eighty percent every single time we play there. It's bullshit. Right. It's not fair. They're, they're, they're gonna. It's a home field advantage because it's Georgia. Like, what yeah, do you, it's, like they're right down the road. Same yeah. for uh, you know, if Auburn's playing anyone other than Georgia, Auburn owns the stadium because they're not far from Atlanta. Same with Alabama. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's, it's just, yeah, if it's, it's literally it's, anybody it's, but those three teams, mm-hmm. it's it's in a way it's a hard away game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree, and, and then you got a team like Oregon traveling all the way across the country to, to go to the Georgia yeah, game, Georgia to a Georgia play. home game, right? And a kickoff, um, just a joke. Like, yeah, yeah. Fuck them, bitches, man. Um, yeah. So, our, what do we need to do to win the game? I think I think that was that's uh, always my thought is like, but like, and the, the simple things are like, you got first of all, our offense hasn't looked great the last couple of games yeah I'm, and you know i actually think the offense was okay last week it just there's just there's four plays that turnover that turnover was the, like the game changer the yeah. turnover is the play um yeah. Kyron Lacey, was, I, I actually felt like uh, so once we got the ball back and it was 17 17 i felt like okay we're about to punch it in and we're going to oh, take yeah, control I, of that complete game I felt like the game was over yep. and then obviously the fumble happens and i'm like game's not even close to over um but yeah, so that play is the play. Um, if that play goes differently, you know, I actually think we win the game by two scores. Yeah, uh, it just flipped everything. I had um, like I, I had it in my head, thirty-one to seventeen at that point. Like mm-hmm. that we were about to take control and we were gonna. Yeah, I felt, just stick I felt, it to them. 
I felt similar. And that that's the kind of team too. If you would have gone up, like they probably would have given up. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, that's the stadium. The stadium would have started clearing out. Yep. Um, another play, Kyron Lacey dropping that ball the that third, was on his chest. Two of them. Yes. I, mean, I know he had the other drop, but the other drop was a little tough. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna complain too much. You're about talking about that. the third and the third and two one. one. The right. one that's right here, there's not a defender anywhere close to him. That's inexcusable. The first one, I can, you know, I can yeah, get over. I agree. That one's terrible. Um, there was another couple plays. Um, I had a big issue with play calling. Oh, oh, I got the other one. The other, yeah, the, I didn't, I didn't love the play calling either. But the other play that sticks in my mind and I haven't been able to stop thinking about is um, the uh, the picked up flag at the end of this first. Oh, game. God. dude, what the fuck was that? That made no, the ball was at his eyes. I didn't, they said it was uncatchable. I mean, right. Are you crazy? He could, I mean, it's a jump like, ball. It's a 50 50 jump ball over the middle. Anybody could jump dude, up and grab it. Even, it wasn't even that. If he didn't get hit early, he was going to catch that ball. Right. right. Like it was just, it was right at his chest. I mean, that was, I couldn't believe that. That looked, that reminded me so much of um, Saints Rams, dude. Oh, yeah. Oh, right, right, right. Right. Like, pick, like how, do you, how do you pick up a flag? At that? Yeah. Right. Pick that up. No, I understand. There the have been times when I wanted to pick up flags before, but I mean, fuck, he threw the flag. Like, let him make the call. He's on the play. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. That was crazy to me. I think if those three plays, any of those three plays, go differently, that's a completely different yeah. game. There was yeah, a point for me in the third quarter where it was right after the fumble. It was right after the fumble. It's uh, second and six. I thought our I thought our run game was playing really really well. But instead yep. of using like an outside run scheme or like a quick, a quick like out uh, a quick screen or a quick toss to the running back, we try to throw it over the middle and miss on second and six, and now it's third and six, and we yep. run it. And I'm like, run it on second down, throw a quick screen on third if you don't get the first. Like, I, feel I like honestly, I, I think, I think, with, game. yeah, I think with a lot of that too was the way that A and M was running their defense, like. Where they were dropping back a lot of guys, and we were thinking that okay, we could we could hit them on some runs, um, but yeah, it, it was too a little too yeah, cute I mean, sometimes. We, yeah, we really were running. We were run all over them, and we we were. I, I felt like we quit on the run game for no reason. I agree, absolutely. I, even when we were down by like a John touchdown Emory. or even two, like we could have just kept going. Yeah. John, I mean, people are talking about John Emery because he had the three touchdowns, but Noah Kane also couldn't be stopped. No, bo- right. both of them. I said it after the Alabama the game. Own reads were killing them. They had nothing for that, and we just oh, 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 let's go back to that turnover. I mean, if you hand the ball off to uh, John Emery, he's probably touchdown. still fucking running. That, that might have been a sixty-yard touchdown, and, and instead it turns into a fumble for a touchdown. And yeah. that's always that's my biggest problem with Jaden is the zone reads have been his issue. He's thrown one or two intercept. How many? Throw two interceptions, right? Yeah, it's like he's trying to take care of the ball too much, but in this case, he's taking care of it, and then he ends up making a mistake because yeah, he took it, care of it. You know, like ninety percent of his mistakes were on the zone reads, uh, right? Or a zone read triple option where it's hand the ball off, run with it, or throw it, and he goes to throw it, and it's a pick, which was oh, you're, talking about, you're talking about RPO. Okay, I see. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. It's well between the RPOs and the and the read options. That's where his mistakes are. I I I, I don't know. I I think uh, obviously the fumble is like that was unfair. Yeah. It was. I mean, he's he has polarizing play. Like it was just the big play. You know yeah. that kind of thing. Uh, and he hasn't had like a fumble issue this year, so it's like it's no. hard to get on Jaden. If anything, he hangs on. He holds onto the ball too long, or he doesn't want to push it downfield because he's that's afraid of having an interception. Things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's just. But uh, it goes back to like, remember well, after the ball is not something that's going to change. No, so. but it goes back to a little bit of that Tennessee game where if you remember, we were talking a lot about like our wide receivers just aren't getting separation at all on corners. And um, I still just I think, think I still just think he's got to release it anyway. I agree. If he gets a one on one, he needs to find the one on one and just let it, it go. Look at the but, uh He had. You know, he just threw it up to Malik a couple times, and he goes up and mosses he has, Eli he has, Ricks. He never, all year, this is a play-calling issue. He has never had this check-down guy that's, like, sitting there in the flat or, like, in a quick out or, like, a little, like, uh, which, curl in, under the middle or something like that. He's never had that. Which makes no sense because uh, if you're going to be a conservative quarterback, 
don't you want to give him a conservative option other Absolutely. than Absolutely. So fucking- I uh, the Arkansas game, we got sacked a kajillion times, right? There was a lot of times yeah. where they show they show the replay of this and they show it from behind the behind the uh, offense, and they're showing like four wide receivers that are just going vertical, and with their backs turned, and by the time they even are even about to turn around and look, the quarterback's already sacked. There is no check down at all, and it's and like why are all four of these guys either. running twenty yards down the field when you can't protect the quarterback, like? It that's the kind of stuff all year that's kind of baffled me a little bit with the offense, but um, there's all right. So I saw a couple of little rumors, um, and this is obviously we're looking ahead a little bit, but with uh, Luke Fickle going to Wisconsin, right? Um, yeah. Possibly making a call to Mike Dimbrock, an old OC at um, at Cincinnati, to come to Wisconsin. I hate I'm okay with it. Uh, yeah. I Jack wasn't Jack but... wasn't ready for this question at all. You know, it's not it's not like I want him gone. I think he should be fired, but like you know, I wouldn't I'm not gonna be like, oh fuck, we lost our OC, you know. Right, exactly. exactly. Um there's a handful of OCs. Especially when I, we already have like regime change going on anyway, so like just another OC. But don't you feel like if you got another OC, I mean, you, you obviously we always want this like young up and comer OC that's so exciting and all that, but like Brian that's Kelly. not really Brian Kelly's style. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, like we've done some like, you know, it's not like we have like an old antiquated offense. That's not really the problem. It's more just like decision making, conservative, conservative stuff. style, right? Shoot. And there's been rumors. I mean, you know, it's nothing confirmed, but like that Brian Kelly has had to step in and make help make the play calls on offense sometimes. Right. If that's the case, then maybe like maybe it's just not a good fit. If the head coach has to step in and help with play calling, then yeah. maybe it's just not the right guy. Um you know, I well, I, I mean I at, at Notre Dame, he has Tommy <laughs> Reese, right? He had Tommy yeah. Reese at Notre Dame who was just a quarterback probably a few years before. And, I mean, you can't tell me that he's some, like, experienced OC. We all right. know who was, run, who was running the show, right? Yeah. Um, it, you know, I be, um, shit. I, yeah, I wasn't ready to talk OC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I jumped, I, out, I, I jumped the gun a little bit. I don't even I have, think- like, a list in my head of, like, who I would want if we had to make a new OC hire. Well, I know a guy that you've always I have a handful. I know a handful. guy that you've always loved. It's Kendall Bryles. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to say that. I was like, that's yeah, Jack's guy. I've wanted him Honestly, for five years. But I mean, what, how, what do you think of Garrett Riley? Well, yeah, I obviously love Garrett Riley. Um, Where's he at? Kent, or no, TCU. TCU, yeah. He's uh, Sonny Dykes' OC. So oh. he's he's with the Lincoln Riley, Sonny, the Sonny Dykes the whole like offense train, whatever. Yeah. Um, tree. Um, I, I always, I always don't love a hire when he's working under a guy who, you know, already calls plays a little bit. Yeah. Um, I agree with that. Reminds me, you know, it's like, I mean, this is the NFL, so it's different, but like Sean Payton, Pete Carmichael, and now oh, Sean Payton's gone. The offense is terrible. Um, uh, Joe oh, Brady, uh, Jake Peets. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, there was, awesome. uh, there's also a rumor. Uh, Jake Peets is the a Rams offensive assistant. Mm-hmm. And there's a rumor that Matt Rule at Nebraska is looking at Jake Peets to be his uh, quarterback's coach. At Nebraska. Nebraska. He, off to a horrible oh, no, he was yeah. his quarterback coach in Carolina that first year. That's exactly. Exactly. So um, Joe Brady's still out there. I'm just telling you. Just putting that out there. Joe Brady is still out there. That's too flashy. To be of a... fair to Jake Peets, his quarterback was Max Johnson. So that's true. He, yeah, he that played well. Ma- Max has the third most touchdowns in LSU history in a season. Oh, calm down. You got out of your chair there, Charlie. Calm Charlie, down a little bit. I will defend Chill out. that. Charlie, that's my, that. fucking, that's my fucking point. <laughs> Max Johnson defender Max right here. Didn't start over. Uh, what's his fucking name? The dude Hayes was, King. Yeah, Haynes King who throws like this. Yeah, oh. Connor Connor Wegman over her. No, Haynes King is Jimbo's guy. 
Haynes King doesn't matter. Like doesn't matter. If Max Johnson wasn't clearly better than him, then he's not a good quarterback. And if he was Max second also- highest in touchdown passes in LSU history, then that means Jake Peets must have done a pretty good job. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Although again, um, I don't think our offense last year was very good. So. <laughs> Okay, so all right, we keep. Well, yeah, I, I keep derail. I think I keep derailing us, but let's go back to the SEC championship game uh, that Jack was so passionate about when we first came on. Um, mm-hmm. The SEC championship game. Yeah. Let's get our minds right. Jeez, all this, it. like this town, fucking Jeez, sucks. He said he was just like on a rampage. Fuck that nurse. Yes, exactly. So, <laughs> tell us. All right, what do we need to do, LSU, to beat Georgia? Um, I mean. The the scariest thing about this game is that the way that we lost last week, George is able to do that times ten, um, which is yeah. just run the ball down our fucking throat and then suffocate the shit out of us. Yeah, yeah George, you know what? The, George is able to do that, you know, all day long. The disappointing thing about last week, I think, was the missed tackles. I, I felt like a lot of times we were there in position to make a play and we didn't make the play, um, and that was really tough to see. I think um, a lot of those missed tackles though are down the field. You know? I agree with that. I think I think we were slightly out of position. Devon like up front. Exactly. It was it was um A Kane was always in a good position to make a guy miss. Yeah, and you know what? And he's uh, a great for, running back. So I mean that's gonna happen. They every every third down was like a third and one and third and two. Mm-hmm. Every third down. That's and the it's key. like that's, bro, this, that's, that's exactly what I was gonna bring up. Is that very hard? That's very hard to deal with when you have a team like that. That yeah. It, it, here's the thing about A and M. Like they got a they got a shit ton of talent. Um, that they, they've completely underplayed this entire year. So the, obviously they were all jacked up. LSU last game of the season, that kind of thing. But um, yeah, that's the style that they want to play. They yeah. want to like punch you in the mouth and like wear you down. And they did that to our defense and. But yeah, I think we were like slightly out of place in a couple of plays. Like, a, yeah. yeah, and, and then our, our they, I mean, their offensive line just pushed us around too. Yeah, that was. We didn't tough. get enough rotation up top. We did not rotate our guys in and out wisely. We got worn out really quickly on the defensive line, and that's been yeah. one of our strong suits all year. Is our conditioning up top in the front seven? Yeah, especially it, in the second half. Games. You haven't yeah. seen us get whooped in the second half like that no. at all. Yeah, like even against think- Tennessee, really hadn't even got whooped like that. To keep um, us in the game, we need to we need to be conditioned well for Georgia. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, it's tough to yeah. get conditioning in in a week. But yeah, well, no. not saying- and you know why? What scares me with Georgia, and it, uh, you just have to have Harold Perkins. Like, stop, stop letting the other team, uh, like Dictative scheme zone. him out. Yeah, stop it. Put him. Mean, there weren't um, many. I didn't see many cases where he wasn't in the game. Oh, not in the game. They schemed him out. Yeah. So they would run a guy in motion. They would figure out. They would figure out if he was man, and they would run that that running back all the way to the sideline and move Harold Perkins out. And so per- Perkins had to guard him. So Perkins was out. If that's the case, switch him with another guy and let him at least rush the passer. You have to have him there affecting the quarterback in some kind of way. Like if he's going to be all the way to the sideline, then he's out of the play. And they, they, and they did that. They did that exactly for that reason. And I saw it in the first play of the game, and they they kept doing it over and over and over. They knew how to keep keep him out of the game. It was a complete I, scheme. I think the issue is that Harold Perkins isn't like he's a, a not a super liability or anything like that, but like he's not great in run support. So when you run his way, I mean, he's getting walloped by these giant uh, tackles. I, I, get yeah, I get that. Yeah, I get that. Once so that that's I think the thing that scares me the most is that um, now if we're not able to stop them on first and second down I think they're gonna have third and shorts or they're just gonna be picking up first downs. Now says a minute can still okay. scramble though. Like so I've seen it plenty of times where he's that's he's key. back in the backfield and he decides he's gonna take off running and there's nobody that can kind of get to him and he's he's shifty man like that kid's um what right. do they call him uh. Uh, what was it? It's whatever he shaved his head. They called him uh something. Well, had a nickname for him. Gold chain Stetson or something like that. No, it what was it. um. Oh shit! I know. I What's I... and then all of a sudden now he's like a, a shifty a shifty player. 
or they just, just give him like, like a something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what it was. I'm about to say something, but I'm not gonna say it. I uh, feel like we gave him like a <laughs> like a a quote unquote hood name, right? Yeah, like, like that. It was something like that. Hood uh, was it Hood Stetson or something like that, or something like I don't know, something something yeah. like that. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, he's he's. I mean, juke the guy out of his shoes a few weeks ago. Like, yeah, but somebody actually somebody yeah, said he, if, somebody if said we, Stetson's running to go get the milk. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. Uh, if we stop them on first and second down, and they don't have, and they're just not, you know, pushing us around all game, he's not going to be able to run. Because if if you have him in third and you know eight and longer than that, Harold's shutting him down all day. I mean, that's well, not. Yeah, it's, yeah, I, that's what I, I want. Harold Perkins in the Arkansas role, like put yeah, him in that uh, role to where he's yeah. spying the quarterback and he's going after the quarterback at it's all delayed time. blitz quarterback. Spot. And if there is no other option for us, right? right. Like that that's is Harold's that best is position it. as well. Yeah, I mean right. he's a game changer. Right. That's why he was like completely, you know, irrelevant in this A and M game is because right. you know they're able to just run the ball all day. Uh, they don't have to even worry about yeah. throwing on third downs. Um, but Georgia's yeah, like y- y'all said it, George's going to be the best run team we play all season. Yeah, yeah. their offensive line is just maulers. So yeah, you know, um, has only been sacked twice all year. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Those crazy are both, stat. Against, both of those were against Vanderbilt. So, wow. <laughs> which they won 55 to nothing. So, um, those were probably late in the game, too. I'm going to text my friend that. <sighs> uh, thanks for the yeah. encouragement, Jack. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a completely different thing. But yeah. if you're able to stop them on first and second down, uh-huh. get to a third and six, something no, like that. No one's been able to do it, but. This is also the best defense Georgia will have played all year. I mean, I I just see them like on first downs a lot. I mean, you think you think they're going to run the ball down your throat, and then they do like a little play action rollout. Brock Bowers is right there, like shit like that is just like, oh, man, they've got it's insane. I don't like the receivers, but god damn it, do I love their tight ends? Holy fuck! Darnell well, Washington I mean, is also Tarno Washington and Brock Darnell Bowers, Washington. and then you got you got Eric Gilbert on the fucking bench, guys. So like, <laughs> yeah. Just so you know, well, no, he's uh, he's on the couch, not on the bench, right? Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, I, I know it's a daunting task, but okay. So we've talked a lot about their offense, but the, obviously their defense is the best part of their team. Yeah. Um, even though they only return three guys on defense yeah, right. from last year, um, but they're still like so good, and they're I think that has a lot in to, the country. Yeah, right? I think that has a lot to do with Kirby Smart and that whole Nick Saban scheme and all that kind of stuff. That he that it's it just. It's like plug and play kind of defense in yeah. the, in college, yeah. and um, well, their corner their corners are great, especially um, Billy Ringo and especially when you're yeah. plugging in five stars. Yeah, I mean, so all right, I didn't know this. I heard this on the radio this week. Um, they're one of the only teams that had did not bring in a uh, one transfer portal guy at all last year. Wow, none. They brought none in because they love their recruiting so much, and. Yeah. Um, and a lot of- yeah, it's crazy though, right? Like, yeah, the amount of guys that we had to bring in just to make a team, and they're just like, "Nah, we're good." Like, we don't have to do any of that. And they so they lost a handful too. Yeah, Jermaine, Burton. Jermaine Burton's on Alabama, Jermaine Burton's which I don't on, know what the right. fuck that was for. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, know why he, he left. What a mistake that guy made, right? Yeah, That's weird. That's yeah, I, it was um, really bad. And then he punched his girl. It's just unfortunate. Yeah. yeah. Um. So. And, yeah, on our offense against their defense, um, I just feel like you have to establish some sort of running game, right? Like, you got Run. to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Oh, for sure. Um, and Josh Williams will be back, thank God. Yeah. The, um, it's. I think the actually this week the key is more. Um, usually it's run to pass. Um, but this I could be pass to run. I think I think this week you got to set up. It's the it's going to be the it's got to be the quick passing game this week. It's a yeah. similar Can't. Uh, against Bama. What we did, we had a lot of those little like out routes and shit like that. Yeah, right. Uh, mostly to neighbors. I think neighbors had like had like eight or nine catches that game. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mason Taylor too had a little bit of like a um, game against Bama. Nobody talked about it. Was Kayshawn. Uh 
Kayshawn had like 120 yards against Bam or something like that. And it was all those little just little yeah. slants little and shit. Dink and doinks. Little, little yeah. shit in the middle. Um, it's like, you know. Uh, you got to make their corners move. On my word, I was looking for. But it's just little stuff over the middle that we did against Bama that mm-hmm. I think that was the reason we were able to open up the passing game. Josh Williams had a good game because of it. Um, yeah. Jaden Daniels ran all over him, obviously. Yeah, uh, because there are just lanes. It's just that you, if you get that quick passing game going, like you get, did against Bama, you're gonna be in the game. Yeah, and you I, you cannot turn the ball over in this game. There's no if you're if you want to win this game, there I don't think you can have any turnovers because they're at not all. Going to. They're not going to. They're not going to. Yeah, you have to take advantage of every possession you get. I would yeah. love to see us. Um, honestly, I would love to see us not win the co- coin toss. Or, or sorry, not take the ball. Sure. Yeah, in the uh, yeah either. Def- Obviously, I think we're. I think we would defer if we won the toss, right? Wouldn't yeah. you say? Yeah, yeah. I, I would like that to happen where they get the ball first, we get the ball in the second half, set us up for like a second half kind of run. Yeah, that, honestly, well, this, we've been we've been good at that all year. Like, let's let's play what we're good at, I guess. Yeah. How things were set up for the A and M game, and then you just had the the crazy fumble. Um, yeah, right. And yeah, I mean, you know, just it's, that's, <sighs> but everything was setting up but prior to that really well yeah um, yeah we said um so yeah i think that is the key yeah, if you if you can get the ball for a second half that's definitely that would definitely be huge but you know we'll yeah. see what happens. i think uh, offensively we need to attack their cornerbacks in the run game we need to just try to run wide and get their cornerbacks to try to dive in and like try to run sideline to sideline with us and then use that in the passing game and the quick and, passing game and uh, and i think you're gonna have to take some shots down the field like well, it, yeah we're not going to. Um, I don't think we will either. I, I, I think I think you got to get to. A, shit. I mean, you got to get to a situation where you got a little bit of of uh, protection to where you can at least take one shot, and it could be like a twenty yard like like fly route on the run or something like that. You know, like he ain't gonna throw that ball. <laughs> I'm telling you right I now. I know. I know. I'm just gonna you're yelling it. Throwing it past fifteen. Throw it. Throw it. He's not gonna fucking throw it. I'm gonna tell you now. I'm gonna save you the breath. He's gonna hold on to the ball. And he's gonna take the. To he's take at the best probably. gonna run for, and it could be for thirty yards. Who knows? But he's not gonna throw that ball. I'll tell you that right yeah. now. Right. If well, he hasn't thrown the ball within two seconds, it's not coming out. <laughs> uh, Jack, your your encouragement all the way. Uh, this think? entire podcast, you've been encouraging me. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited. Sa- Saturday is going to be an interesting day because I'm going to be drinking from fucking 8 a.m. till goddamn midnight. You sound, you sound excited. We, we've watched Jaden for 12 games now. We know he's going to throw it. Like, and it's okay. Jaden's a great quarterback, but he ain't going to throw the ball. It's just not coming out. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to make it the game time, man. And then you're going to be saying to yourself on your couch, you're going to be saying, oh, my God, he, he had to have somebody downfield. He doesn't. He doesn't have anyone open downfield. Uh, he doesn't. I know. No, I've seen that. He doesn't have anybody open downfield. But he's not but giving the. Not yeah, him. I agree with you. He's not giving the 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 guys one on one like opportunities to catch the ball. He ha- he's not he's not giving them shots. What? Going great to start. great example. He's Moose, not Moose, start week thirteen. Moose Muhammad. Yeah. Moose yeah. Muhammad last week. What a great example of like just throw it up for this freak show yeah. to catch the ball. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd love yeah. to get that guy in the transfer portal. No fucking kidding. He's not leaving um, the thing. He ain't leaving. Him and, him and Evan, only. Evan Stewart. I'd love for both of those guys. Um, and, uh, all right, it's Charlie. Uh, we'll we'll cut to that. Yeah. Uh, well, we were talking a little bit earlier, Jack, about like transfer portal. Um, and I know Who Charlie, you, you were talking you were talking a lot about the wide receiver room, right? So we possibly have, for like next year, right? We've been recruiting some of the best wide receivers in the nation to sit on our bench for the last three years, dude. It's kind of nuts the fact that we still have this wide receiver depth after so long like alex adams was on our bench and wasn't playing special teams last year and leads the mac in receiving yards yeah he's a freshman though uh redshirt freshman but yeah like uh, like i think he was at least but um well you, your good examples are uh first of all chris, chris yeah trey palmer is a great trey example. palmer that was my next example yeah that would be great uh, now uh chris hilton chris chris hilton being hurt a lot uh, and yeah. not seeing the field, and that that guy was like a huge recruit coming out of Zachary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He he does a uh, track for LSU too, but still, like he hasn't been able to do track either. Uh, Brian Thomas has gotten a few touch three touchdowns, I think, this year. 
but he like Brian Thomas. Jaden had a very quiet good year. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Uh, Brian Thomas has got a, had a good year, but like we're not using him the, the field un, as much as we like you. You low key, Jack. You were I think you were thinking that he was probably the, one of the best, like maybe the best wide receiver on our team. I didn't. Uh, I never thought he was the, the best. Year. I, I I did think he might be well because we all just assumed Kayshawn was the best and. Uh, he may still be. Who knows? I mean, I, he, so yeah, I awesome. agree. I agree. So uh, season, it's hard. To, it's hard. To, I mean, right now it's it's neighbors because he's the best in those short yardage yeah. routes. It's the only thing we're throwing. Right. Uh, right. So there, yeah, neighbors is the best. But um, you know, in the more intermediate twenty to thirty yard throws, I think Kayshawn's actually better there. But he's not getting those chances, which is why he's not having a great it's year. Not the offense. Yeah. Well, it's it it could be the offense, but we're just it's just too conservative. It's just too conservative. Everything is. So, uh, my thing was end of season. Look at the look at the wide receiver room. Who are you going to have left? Because yeah. Kayshawn's still going to the league. I think. I think he's at least a mid second rounder, even with the year he's had. Right, based off of the previous year and the leadership he's taken under Brian Kelly, which has always been a really big thing for NFL scouts is if you could be a leader under Brian Kelly, you can at least like you're going to get drafted in the mid rounds anyway. Um, Jeray's gone. And I think Jeray's going to make a team as a special teams guy, like Racy McMath. Yeah. Well, he's been a gunner the last couple of years. Yeah. And uh, I think he's, he's been our best special right. teams player other than Jay Bramblett and Slade Roy. We don't have a lot. We don't have a lot of those guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, quite. Speaking of special teams, quiet, good season, and then you can get back to uh, your receivers. Um, what's his name? Ramos. Yeah, for sure. Been He's very been solid, very He's trustworthy, been solid all year. I agree with that. Um, and, yeah. and honestly, the Florida, the Florida State game was not his fault. No, at no, all. No, 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 that wasn't like we missed blocks. So that was just yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. Um, but so, yeah, I agree. The wide receivers you have left after that. And Kayshawn, so, I mean, the bulk of your receiving is going to Kayshawn, Malik, and Jure, with yeah. Kyron kind of in there. And then I mean, I think Kyron's on his last year of eligibility, right? So I'm looking at the uh, – is Kyron on his last year? I think so. Not I sure. think he was honored at senior day. But didn't, Ky- didn't Kyron, like, feel – like, it didn't even feel like a stopgap anyway, even if it yeah. wasn't – I don't yeah. feel like he's, like, the guy. Kyron, I just – I, I mean, I'm you know, I got bad taste in my mouth from Kyron Lacey, but – uh. He just feels like a filler guy. Um, yeah, right. I, okay, but I'm looking at the uh, – just here's the list of in-order uh, receiving yards. So it's Malik Neighbors, Kayshawn Butte, Dre Jenkins, Brian Thomas, Mason Taylor, Kyron Lacey, Jack Besh, and then a bunch of running backs. Yeah. yeah, right. But our offense is built for the running backs to receive out of the backfield on short routes when the wide receivers aren't getting separation and – like Matt said, they're not getting separation. So the running backs are taking a bunch of touches receiving wise or Jaden's running with it. But come into year, you're going to have uh, um, Malik, Brian, Jack, Chris Hilton, um, Samson, Sheldon Sampson, uh, Jalen yeah, Brown. Samson's going to start year one. I'm telling you that right now. That kid's oh, a- I don't, you're not biased at all. Yeah. No, but I mean, like you're gonna I, have another I, deep I, wide receiver I've room. That kid since he was in fucking eighth grade, like yeah. that kid's serious. You but know, he reminds me of a little bit. Room. He he reminds me a lot of of um, uh, Malachi Dupree, like coming well, out I, coming out of um, Rummel, where it was like a run heavy offense. He didn't get a like, lot of catches. I thought like, he went to John Curtis. Didn't Malachi? Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. He yeah, went he to John Curtis. He, he even more of a run heavy offense. Yeah, like, exactly. So he was like in a veer. And like yeah, he's a freak a, show, but and he had, almost took. But I, it felt like it for do for Malachi. It, it took like a year for him to kind of like get his like bearings yeah. a little bit because he was in such a different offense, you know. Right, because it was Anthony Jennings, and then once they plugged in uh, Brandon Harris, who you know wasn't he great. could play a little. Bit, yeah, he was a little bit better. Uh, dude, right, Malachi Dupree on fifty fifty balls was sick. Yeah, yeah, and Shelton Sampson does remind me of that though. But he's also he might be a little faster too. He runs yeah. like a. He, I think he was like sub four four forty times. But with a, with a guy with him and like like you you just mentioned Charlie, a guy like Jalen Brown coming in, like those are guys that are they're complete studs. Yeah, right. um, and then you've got a a strong slot wide receiver in Landon Ibieta on the bench with a red shirt. Jack Besh still on the team. 
you're going to have another super deep wide receiver room. Yeah. And some of those guys are going to leave. I'm worried because I love, I know we all love Jack Besh here. I'm worried that there's a chance Jack's gone. In I season. don't know. I don't know about Jack. Like, I, I think Jack is a guy, like, same with Malik He's a home Hamer, guy, but that, he's that that both of those play. guys, that 337 crew is pretty strong. Like, I, I don't know about that. Don't forget that Jack was originally going to go to Vanderbilt. Yes. Right. When, so this I mean, is like Will Shepard at Vanderbilt is from Louisiana as well. Well, there you go. He's their uh, best wide receiver. Yeah, I just um, I don't know. I don't think. I, I mean, even if Jack did go, love Jack Besh, but like it wouldn't be that bad of a hit. This I think this year, year, this year, Jack is not. It's like who's your top, like he did. He's not year. utilized. Right. right. He's, it's a little different. I I actually miss Jack Besh in that hybrid role. I think uh, to the be biggest, honest, the biggest problem with Jack Besh is that Mason Taylor has been so good. Yep, yeah, I agree. I he agree. Had, it was, I mean, and Mason Taylor probably wouldn't be as prominent in the offense if Jack Besh hadn't gotten hurt early. I agree with that. Um, because yeah. that whole like it opened up a whole a whole the whole thing. The thing about right. Jack Besh in that hybrid role is Jack can't block big guys, and it kind of telegraphed to you what the play was. Yes, absolutely. Um, because if Cole Taylor was in the game, you know it's a run. If yeah. um, Jack Mashburn is in the game, you know it's a run. Yep. Same Jack thing. Besh is in the game. Holy fuck. We have a lot of Jacks. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> a lot uh, of guys with the last name Taylor and a lot of guys with the first name Jack. But yeah. if Jack Mashburn's in the game, it's a run. He's probably playing a fullback. If Cole Taylor's in the game, it's a probably a rollout pass. He's probably yeah. trying to seal the edge. Right. And if Jack, Mashburn, or Jack Besh is in the game, it's a run. Right. Or a pass. So that's the only issue I had with Jack playing the hybrid role. I mean, he played great, but telegraph yeah. the offense. I, um, so who would be the top four receivers? It would be Brian Next Thomas, year. Neighbors, uh, uh, neighbors um, Shelton Sampson. I, I think you have to have Jack Besh in there, right? Jack Besh, yeah. He's, yeah. <laughs> Top four yeah. wide receivers next year. So you're assuming yeah. Kayshawn's gone, obviously. So like, yeah, yeah, neighbor neighbors is probably number one, and then you have. Well, um, I think neighbors Brian is playing Thomas. Your, I think Brian Thomas is playing your one as your one on one red zone guy. But yeah, like Malik Neighbors is going to be your target. I mean, Brian Thomas, a, yeah. Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas are going to play. It doesn't matter. Which yeah, one. yeah, either one or two. Yeah, they're they're both there. They're, um, gonna, they're both going to play a. Like, but I mean, it's hard. Top four, I I have to have Jack Besh in there, right? Yeah. Like, and then who's taking the last slot? I don't. I mean, who did we even have from last year? I can't even remember. That's like just red shirting right now. Um, Um, Chris Hilton. Chris Hilton. um, But he's from uh, 2021, not 2022. Right. Um, Yeah. Just talking about anybody who's just not playing. That's good. Um, Landon Ibietta is a white a white slot guy. Kind of yeah. like uh, Trey Quinn. I like don't even know who that is, honestly. Well, I, I don't. I don't think he's better than Jack Besh. No, I, he's I know, not. I know who he is, he's, but like he's just not yeah. better than Jack Besh. Yeah, I mean, I haven't um, even heard about him in like camp or anything like that. You know? No, he didn't come in until late. He. Yeah, we didn't have a freshman wide receiver come in other than that guy. No, he's the he's the only one. Okay, so yeah, maybe not. Like, yeah, I, we were loaded. <laughs> We were loaded at wide receiver, so I thought we had a, I thought we had a lot more coming last year too. I'm just going through the roster right now, <laughs> I don't see anybody that like. Yeah, I mean, you got Jare's gone, you got uh, Kyron Lacey's gone, you got Kayshawn Butte's gone. Um, uh, Chris Hilton's a guy that you just don't know what you're going to expect out of him now, um, yeah. and like he could be an odd man out, but yeah, you're going to have to have some. Uh, I agree with you. you you're going to have some freshmen come in, but I think you got to get some portal guys. Yeah, I I, I think you're going to need them. Uh, there was a, gotta, there was a there one. was a guy from Alabama or two guys from Alabama today um, that that went in the portal. Um, I, I guarantee you this: Texas A and M's got portal guys coming, way more than what they already had. Uh, they already had like a top, like I think it was like a five star running back. He's in the portal. Um, so they they got some guys a lot more that are going to come. I mean, um, yeah, you can also just do what USC did, which was buy Jordan Addison. No shit. Yeah, so, absolutely is what they. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> right. Stuck a briefcase under his car at Pitt and was like, "Hey, this is if you come to South uh, to USC West." 
I have absolutely no problem with them doing none. It. Absolutely not. Um, it, it is uh, it is the way of the world. It is where I, it's where we live in college football. Have, Go for it. I have but no problem with it. It's my just, only my only thing with it is if everybody else is doing it, then LSU needs to be just as good at it as everybody yeah. else. No, uh, that's what I'm Jump in, jump in the yes. boat. Jump on in and right. do what they're doing, and let's win some championships. Period. Get exactly. in the playoffs. Yeah. Um, yeah. we're, we're already close. I mean, it's Shit, close, yeah. so close that we, we could have week. tasted it. And it's like, we're already there. Like, let's just go ahead and like hammer it down. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, right. okay. So I posed the question on Twitter. We're going to get to this now. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> I got uh, a whole bunch of, um, uh, responses from this. I have 155 comments on this already God, damn. two hours ago. Um, if, if you could be bring back if you could bring back one former LSU player other than Joe Burrow for the SEC championship game, who would it be and why? Just for this game, this Saturday, you could bring back any former player um, other than Joe Burrow because I felt I've, I had to make that disclaimer because everybody would have been like, Joe Burrow, oh my yeah. God, suck his dick, blah, blah, blah. Like the, all the time, that's what happens on Twitter. Right. But um, this opened it up a little bit more and it made it a little bit more interesting of a a discussion at least so you want me to share the screen you can uh what so let's let's talk about like what what you guys uh think as far as your um your picks for this and we'll go over some of the comments in a second too oh. um me and charlie are fighting with the graphic um yeah. <laughs> i don't know i i mean obviously like the if you're if you're saying no joe burrow then like the obvious it, next is Tyron Matthew, and then the and it's this game though. It's this game, and like and it's against Georgia, right. and who Georgia is like, and that was kind of my yeah, point. So, was like it needs to match up to Georgia. Then I think the obvious answer is, and like this is if you're trying to go for like the right answer and like yes, the the, the best answer. Then the answer is, the answer is Tyron Matthew, and I okay. think like I mean that's just obvious. Um, but if you're trying to like have a little bit more fun with it, which is what I typically like to do, I mean, I said Billy Cannon, that was a joke. But yeah, I know, I know, uh, I, knew, I, I knew you said I, it. I was like, you're just trying uh, to piss me off. So well, yeah, yeah, because you post this, you, you post this every couple months or so. So <laughs> I, just, I like to say Billy Cannon. Uh, but if you're trying to have a little bit more fun, I saw someone. A great answer was Glenn Dorsey. Yes, I've seen a lot of Glenn Dorsey. Glenn Dorsey, um, ton That's of a- Glenn Dorsey on here. Some um, Marcus Spears. Yeah, Fournette uh, to run the ball hard. That um, wouldn't really make a difference in this game. I don't though. agree with that either. And then, yeah. and then, but then you get dumb shit, right? Well, Mine, I don't feel like we need skill players on this, though. You know what I mean? I need we need a guy up front, right. or we need a cornerback. I saw someone say Jamar Chase, and I was like, mm. I mean, that would be good. I've only like, seen one Jamar Chase this whole time. I, okay, I saw I I only saw one too. Uh, a lot of a lot of uh, ju- a couple of Justin Jeffersons, but mostly, it's obviously uh, Tyron Matthew is the number one choice probably. Um, Fournette Dorsey is probably number two actually, um, but I'll I'll read a few of them. Jeremy Hill, which is ridiculous. Um, Miles Brennan, that's uh, crying belly. He's uh, <laughs> I like that. Yeah, one. yeah. I, I thought that was funny. Uh, I'll like that right now. Like. Okay. Um uh Alan Fanica. I so like the Alan a Fanica. Big a big Hall of Fame guard, guard just a road grade Georgia. Um, yes. that could be a good one. Uh Matt it's Flynn. Just... Like, come on, Matt I, I like I like the answer. I like the answer. Okay, um, okay. How about how about like how about like an Andrew Whitworth? Andrew Whitworth, I like that. Um that's a, that's a all right, here's here's one that always just I, I think people do this just to fuck with me. Um Jacob Hester. Like, yeah, no, are I, you I, fucking I, kidding me? I just can't believe someone would say. Here, here's the answer. Here's the answer. Hester, if you need two yards, Hester will get you four. If you need ten yards, he'll get you fifteen. If you need a touchdown on the goal line late in the game, on fourth, Hester will get it. Um, like, get off of my timeline, bro. Like, yeah. are you kidding me? I, I love Jacob Hester. Hester. Do yeah. not get me wrong, but like, are you fuck? Go look at the stats. Go look at Jacob fucking Hester's stats and stop uh, with this whole like you're a hero to LSU and you're a savior. Give me a, give me a break. What do you 
He wasn't even best. He wasn't even a top five player on the 20, 2017. Ridiculous. Yeah. Um. All right. That's, Here's that's, my answer. This is uh, John Peterson's answer too, but this was my answer. Devin White. Yeah, I mean Devin White's. I, that's what I was saying earlier. Is that after Tyron Matthew, Devin White's like the next obvious choice. I think you got to put him in the middle. Let Harold Perkins just roam wherever he wants to go. Devin White will be your 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 guy right in the middle. And like, uh, but he even said John Peterson even said put Devin White in there just to solely spy on Brock Bowers. Yeah, Wherever Brock Bowers goes, Devin yeah. White goes. Yeah, so but like, I, 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 I kind of feel you like know if, what? If, if if that's the role, then Deion Jones would be the better oh. option because as a cover guy, Deion Jones is better than Devin what White. What about Jalen Cox as a cover guy? He was the best cover guy. I dude, I know twenty twenty sucked. He was Jabril our best Cox. cover linebacker. Jabril. Jabril, my yeah. bad, my bad. I'm not even thinking about Jabril in the uh, conversation between him. Oh, here, here's a good he's one. Not, no, 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 no. He's not one of the best linebackers we've ever seen, but he's one of my, my like all top it ten just, cover guys as a linebacker. He's probably in the top five. He was good. I mean, that dude good. could cover anybody. Ryan Paralu is <laughs> an answer. Uh, I, I appreciate it. Uh, one guy says Russell Shepard. No talent at LSU was wasted more than his. Seeing him interchange at wide receiver and quarterback in a true RPO would be a thing of beauty. Yeah, I would bro. like to see Russell Shepard in like a, a legit, you know, with a legit yeah. coach. Best, best answer the whole time. Um, easy. Danny Etling. Yeah. <laughs> Someone said that we're all thinking Danny Etling, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cecil Collins. Um, Dalton Hilliard. Okay. Yeah, you can go on and on and on. But yeah, um, Jamarcus Russell. Uh, Andrew Whitworth. Here's your Andrew Whitworth. Uh, Kyle Williams to stuff the run. Yeah, so a lot of people had to like stuff the run. Like some people went a little close with it, where they were like, "Okay, well. let's, yeah, let's stuff the run, or let's go ahead and like give us some protection, you know, things like that." Um, yeah, but then yeah. I, everybody else is like Tyron Matthew, Patrick Peterson is the flashy ones. But well, I wouldn't say Patrick Peterson's a flashy one. I mean. Cornerback is one of our more thin positions. Something I was going to say is that you get Patrick Peterson on the team and then you just put him on Brock Bowers. Oh, just, yeah. So I mean, that's kind of what he does in the NFL now, right? Pretty much, because he's fucking huge. Yeah. Uh, But he would also return punts. Oh, that's true. Oh, oh, Same with Tyron. Yeah, same with Tyron. He would return punts. I didn't think about the punt return angle. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Shore up special teams pretty fast. Well, are we talking like prime all time playing football or at LSU prime? You tell me. At LSU prime. You Let's say at LSU. LSU. It's Alan yeah. Fanica. If not, it's Alan like, Fanica, it's I'm thinking like, him as a Steelers player. <laughs> I always had this um, hypothetical in my head. Like, okay, we're in, uh, like when I was in high school, um, Barry Sanders was the best running back in the NFL. If you and I always thought about this, if you took Barry Sanders, who he was for the Detroit Lions, and you just plopped him on a high school football field, how many yards would he have? Like in this, like state championship LSU. I mean, like the Superdome, like state championship. How many yards would he? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just like yeah, yeah like fifty carries, uh, five hundred yards, something like that. I don't know. <laughs> but no, Eric so, Henry yes. has a similar stat line in middle school. <laughs> Right, but like so, so basically, yes, you're taking in their prime at LSU, the best they were ever were at LSU, and you're just plopped them on the field this weekend. Yeah. Uh, who would it be? And yes, uh, Tyron Matthew still would be like Eric Gilbert, fantastic. <laughs> Eric Gilbert, yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, that ends that ends that conversation, Jack. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, Jack's been up and down tonight. Uh, he started off real hot. Baton Rouge sucks, all that. Um, and now, and then he like got me down. Actually, I was I, yeah. I was feeling fine, well, and then you got me down. Well, you didn't you didn't listen to the rant hard enough then, because I was very clear. You know, we can get blown out this weekend. I see that path. You know, I don't. <sighs> but we're playing. We're but in we're, the fucking it, game. It's but we're having fun, right? Yeah. But exactly. then, like, but then they're gonna put they're gonna strangle us out. Don't don't let the game. <laughs> I mean, like, obviously, like, it's going to be more fun if we're in the game and if we don't get blown out. But even if we do, just, like, enjoy the fact that we're here. Because, like, how often do we get to do that, you know? Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. It's not often at all. Okay. So, 
uh, after it's that. Be a fun Saturday. After the second as inspirational speech by Jack tonight, let's get to the our score predictions oh, yeah. uh, for the SEC championship game. Um, I, I think we sent off a, a text today, so we got everybody's scores. I got it ready to go for tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Some people like it, some people won't. Is what it is. Um, what do you think, Charlie? I got thirty four twenty five. Uga. 34-25, so obviously we get like a two-point conversion or some shit like that. Um, uh, yeah. You've been having these crazy scores all year, so I'm not... Yeah, Charlie, I sometimes... There's always like a weird score in there. It's like... Sometimes I'm not sure if Charlie even like understands like how... Like, how Yeah, do you know how much a, a touchdown scores work? Is, wor- uh, is worth? Do you even know? Like he, said, he said like 12 know. one week. I'm like, how the fuck are they... <laughs> Four field goals, dog? Uh, Come on. Yeah, right. Yeah, but like who's kicking four field goals? Damian Ramos. You just probably LSU's you just, done uh, it gave him props. Fuck, I don't you just gave him props a second ago. Right. I don't know. Remember what game it was, but LSU kicked four field goals in one game. I don't. It may have been like Auburn or something, but it was, it was, I actually know what game you're talking about. It was 2012 against Auburn. We won 12 to 10. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we were like big favorites in that game. I remember that oh. game. Oh, I don't even want to talk about that. I know the score of every game for the last. Like fifteen years. If you if you want to test me, if you want to quiz me. No, you don't. Um, and I'm a not right now. We'll we'll do that on. Well, no, no, no. no. Well, not not tonight. What's what's your score for this game? Uh twenty-seven to twenty-four LSU. Okay. Enjoy it. Mine and um, I'd already posted it on my little work board at work, so there is no cheating. I wasn't trying to be close to you, but it's LSU 24, Georgia 23. So LSU squeaks one out. Um, and, um, yeah, I can't tell you how it's going to happen uh, Here's because that would be magic, but, like, it's going to like If we can get the stops on first and second down and we can get them in third and longs, Mm-hmm. I think that if it's a close game down the stretch, you can forget about like all the technical stuff and all you got to really think about is the fact that they have not played in close games this year and we have played in tons of close games. And yeah, they've they have not played well in close games. Don't you feel too well, that no, like no, just they haven't played in close games? Like well, don't you don't you feel too well. that like coming off of an uninspired like performance yeah. We're gonna come out. We, we will. We will come out at least like ready to play, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I completely think that's gonna. Let me let me say score. this really quickly. I want Jure to line up at Gunner if we kick it off, which I hope we do. I want Jure to line up as Gunner and just get fucking thrown out first play of the game. I don't care. Somebody do it. Nail somebody. Just. Start off with piss. Just start off with piss and vinegar. Well, and I, I posted on somebody. Twitter last week that I wanted I was going to give a thousand dollars to somebody to get a personal foul to hit Damian Craig on the sidelines. Offer still stands, guys. Offer still yeah, stands. It's That's still fine. there. It's too late now, I guess, but whatever. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just I, I think that you know I the way we closed out the Bama game. Uh, the way we closed out the Arkansas game, I thought was actually impressive. Uh, just like, you know, we just stepped up and we made the plays when they had to be made. Yeah. Uh, another game. I mean, obviously we lost the game, but it was on bullshit with the block extra point. Florida State. But well, we came we, back. We finished that game fantastic. We got back in that game miraculously. Yes. Exactly. We were we were there. We weren't supposed to be there. We came back Aiden and we was, showed a lot of heart. Yes. Aiden was an absolute fucking hero in that game. And yeah. like it's obviously forgotten because, you know, it's stuff that he couldn't control. But um, you know, I just think that we, we know how to finish games. Auburn, another example. You know, it's just yeah. we know, we know how to finish games. Um, and I think they don't they haven't had to yet, so they don't not that they don't know how. But just they haven't they haven't done it. They haven't had to do it. Yeah. So Ellie, yeah, Ellie. Ellie snuck in to Charlie's room. Oh my god, Ellie. <laughs> all right. So um all right, I think that's enough for tonight. Um yeah. let's yeah. put a pin on this. We'll we'll talk about this uh when we're SEC champs uh next week. Um we'll be uh so if we're SEC champs, where are we going? Like where are we are we going to? Uh, we're not Sugar tied Bowl. into anything at that point, right? Sugar or Sugar Bowl? No, it's, we're the best SEC team that's not in the playoff. Yeah, 
Right, exactly. Bow. Uh, yeah, probably it's probably the sugar bowl. Um Okay. But if we lose, it's Alabama after us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so if we do lose though, it's Bama goes to sugar. Tennessee yeah, goes to orange. Goes to the orange bowl because it's closer for them. Yeah. Um, Tennessee and Tennessee's Clemson. going orange anyway. Tennessee and Clemson's in the Orange Bowl, which is going to be. We probably go to the. We probably go to the Citrus Bowl. Shoot Citrus me. Bowl, okay. Citrus Bowl would be pretty boring, and that would probably be against either Notre Dame, Penn State, or Notre Dame. Yeah. Well, it's still good. I think those are That'd good. Be Two good. Um, oh no, no, LSU Notre Dame would be like. That would be heated. It, it would be a, a very entertaining bowl. Twitter would be popping. Yeah. It will be a very, very entertaining bowl. Twitter I can tell you that. Show. Um, okay, so let's wrap it up. Um, let's thank our sponsors. We have a couple more here. Um, uh, Bocock Brothers Cigars. Uh, we appreciate Doug and Brian over at Bocock Brothers. Um, got gave me a whole bunch of new ones. So, uh, Jack, if you're if you guys want to grab a few, you can. We have some over here in the humidor. Um, we appreciate those guys. Uh, BocockBrothers.com. Um, they have some cigar uh, rolling events, and they also have some golf gear online. So go check them out at BocockBrothers.com. Um, also, Courtesy Automotive Group. Uh, Brandon Lejean over at Courtesy uh, Buick GMC. I appreciate him. Uh, he's been an OG sponsor for One Team One Podcast. Uh, you see him at uh, on the screen, 337-224-1867. And you can also check him out on uh, Facebook. He's got a lot of deals that he posts on Facebook. Uh, so we appreciate him. Um, all right. And uh, last but not least, uh, the Jambalaya Pot. Um, uh, they're a food truck right off of uh, Nicholson across the street from Tigerland. So, uh, giving us some, uh, some food here, uh, for all of our guys. We appreciate them doing big things. Eventually they're going to move into a brick and mortar store. So just, just starting off in Baton Rouge had really good food. Um, uh, all the, all the staples you can think of, go get you some uh, jambalaya or some gumbo, uh, during this cold weather at the jambalaya pot on Nicholson. So we'll have their information. We're going to post that out later too. Um, all right. So with that said, uh, let's go over our scores again. Would you have uh, Charlie had some kind of wackadoo? Thirty-four score? twenty-five. Yeah, thirty-four twenty-five. Georgia. I mean, the score. Uh, tw- yeah, he has Georgia. Georgia. Yeah, um, my bad. Got twenty-seven twenty-four LSU. Twenty-seven twenty-four LSU, and then I have twenty-four twenty-three LSU. So Jack and I staying firm. Actually, we we actually love our school. Everybody else, fuck you. You don't. I love LSU. Think LSU to lose this year. So. Um, just FYI. Oh, wow. I didn't know uh, that. Wow. It has, has not happened. I have wow. not. I haven't so either. Are, um, what I'm trying to pick against it. I so, have not wondered. Which um, means Jack is technically 9-3 uh, and three on the year. Um, exactly. Yeah, me and LSU so, are both 9-3. and three. Right. We're um, okay, so let's wrap it up. Uh, appreciate it. What, what you got? Ah, fuck. I can't remember. Oh, okay. actually, I do remember. Uh, sorry. So on the graphic tomorrow, can you put for my score, uh, just have fun? Just ha- I'll put it like very small underneath. Just have fun. Yeah, thank okay, you. Okay, perfect. I'll do that. Um, all right. So for all of our sponsors, we appreciate y'all. Uh, everybody turning in, we we appreciate it. Uh, if you see us on uh, uh, on YouTube, please like and share all that stuff. Uh, we're gonna post this out on Twitter too. So follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, also TikTok. Uh, go check us out on TikTok as well. We may have a new person. I didn't even talk to you, Jack. We may have a new person to help us out with some TikTok uh, videos too, too too soon. So um, I'll. Uh, it's a female actually. So oh, is it? Um, okay. She lives in uh, Atlanta. Yeah, she's a big LSU fan, so she reached out to us. So I'll uh, I'll get you in touch with her. But um, yeah, check us out on TikTok. Um, we're still growing that. Uh, we appreciate everybody for following us. Um, and again, uh, for one team, one podcast. Logan out. You, you fucked it up. <laughs> I fucked it up so bad. <laughs> you messed it up. I, did, I, I didn't feel like the cue. It, it won't stop recording.